Now, back by popular demand, it's the Lance Roberts Show. And good morning and welcome to the show this morning at 6.06 on your drive into work as we kind of get uh, this uh, pre-hump day edition of the Lance Roberts Show underway. Uh, a couple things I want to talk about. 50% of all the S&P 5 earnings uh, companies will report earnings this week. So big week for earnings today after the bell. We've got Apple. Uh, today is also General Electric, Pfizer, McDonald's, others. So we're going to be a lot of big corporate reports. Of course, we continue to watch these reports as they really tell us a lot about what the companies are seeing, not just right now. And we're going to talk about this some more in just a second, but what they're looking at down the road. And of course, as we look at a stronger dollar, the impact on earnings, et cetera, this is the, these are things to pay attention to. But of course, you know, right now the markets are hitting all time highs yesterday, all time high for the markets, uh, you know, on an in, uh, even on an intraday basis have broken out to all time highs. Pretty fantastic. And again, you know, we've had this terrific run, this big recovery since you know, the December 24th lows. And so we say, well, great, all time highs. You're now back to where you were last September um, as we as we are at this level right now. So pretty incredible the turnaround that's just been over the last six months. And of course, investors have been chasing this market over the course of the last you know couple of months in particular, but really not so much the last couple of months. It actually started in just the last month or two. Um, and again, when we take a look at the inflows into equity funds, investors were selling out back here in December. And of course, right at the bottom of the market, a lot of investors selling into that. And really just recently have investors really started kind to pile back into equities. It was kind of a typical um, uh, you know, behavior of investors to sell low and buy high. And this is always problematic, regardless of your tenacity towards uh, armchair type investing, like buy and hold investing or you know, kind of couch potato type investing. Ultimately, our emotions get the better of us. But you know, taking a look at, at, at the markets where we are in particular, there's some reasons that you shouldn't chase this market right here in particular. If we take a look at you know, how far markets move, uh, in, 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 in retrospect, kind of prices of markets are, are really attracted by the laws of physics. And, you know, when prices move too far in one direction, this is kind of logic and everybody knows this. We ignore it, but we know that prices are going to have a correction at some point. And so the goal here is to try to figure out, well, when will that happen? And if we take a look at deviations from long-term moving averages and how far prices move away from that, that average, um, is important. You know, there's an interesting story about uh, you know drivers that go into a driver's education class, a defensive driving class, and the the, the professor says, "How many of y'all are above average drivers?" Eighty percent of them say we're all above average, but yet they're all in the class because they've had an accident. So you know, this is the attitude of investors: is that you know we're all above average investors. Prices are a reflection of that. When we chase markets, we're all chasing this. And when prices get too far above the average, they have to revert because you can't have an average unless you have prices both above and below that. So currently with prices more than 8% above the, the kind of the intermediate term moving average at this point, uh, this has historically been the point you get a reversion. Same thing on a weekly basis work, almost 7% above the moving averages on a weekly basis. And this also is a period where you typically, historically speaking, get some type of correction and price in the market. So this is something to, the, to be aware of. So again, we've talked about the last couple of weeks and we've written about this for our RA Pro subscribers at RAPro.net is that simply take a little bit of money off the table here, rebalance your holdings and, and evaluate your risk because in any given year, no matter how the year finishes up, 29 out of 30 years, the market finishes higher. But despite that, every single year has some form of drawdown and more importantly than not, during those drawdown periods, the gains from the previous part of the year have typically been completely wiped out. You wind up making it back by the end of the year. But again, this is historically normal for the markets to have this. And if we take a look at the last time the market was up 13% in a year, that was back in 2012. The market was up 13%, gave it all up by the middle of summer and then got it back by the end of the year. So, you know, this is typical behavior of the markets and why, you know, when we look at managing portfolio risk, managing portfolios, it's a function of, you know, again, we've talked about before, relating this back to gardening and, and you know, harvesting the bounty, weeding the garden, doing these type of things. This is why you do that because it will actually lower volatility in the portfolio and create higher rates of return 
over time. And plus, when you avoid these drawdowns, you tend to panic less and make last, you know, uh, make fewer bad emotionally based decisions, which makes us perform better over the longer term. Uh, currently, as well as, as, as investors right now are very, very exuberant about the markets. Uh, on a technical basis, the markets are just about as overbought as they've ever been at any peak of the markets going back. Now, that doesn't mean the markets are going to crash and we're going to have the next major bear market. It just simply means you're going to have some type of correction here. And as far as the markets have deviated this year, it would be very possible for the markets to correct back to basically where we were at the beginning of the year and then rally uh, into the end of the year. So, you know, keeping a watch on this and how you manage risk in portfolios is important because, again, there's a lot of news going on. Uh, we've got earnings coming out, but now there's trade talk coming back into the picture. We've got more of the trade negotiations yesterday. Donald Trump talking about the fact that, you know, if it's not a good trade deal, he's going to walk away from it. A big chunk of this rally in the market has been based upon this, uh, this hope that we were going to get some type of trade resolution as it impacts corporate earnings and, and exports in particular. The other side of this, of course, is the Fed. On Wednesday tomorrow, the Federal Reserve will announce their latest you know, policy statement, which is they're expected not to raise interest rates here. But with very strong economic growth in the first quarter, 3.2%, although there's some you know, concerns about the validity of that number, it was still 3.2%. And since the Fed is data dependent, supposedly taking a look at inflationary pressures, of course, rising wage pressures, et cetera, you know, the question is whether or not they will actually just sit on the sidelines and not talk about potentially raising rates more. Or are they going to talk about reducing their balance sheet? What are they going to say? This could have big, big, big implications for the markets tomorrow. So again, a lot of stuff going on this week between earnings and of course the Fed. Uh, could certainly bring some, introduce some volatility, should we say, back into the market. So we'll be right back after the break. Lots of stories to get into this morning. I'm your host, Lance Roberts on the Lance Roberts Show podcast. Don't go away. Load up on guns, bring your friends. It's fun to lose and to pretend. She's over. Catch Lance Roberts podcast later at LanceRobertsShow.com.